So suppose you don't have a watch, you, you don't know your heart rate while you're out running, you don't know your pace, all you know is how you feel. How then do you gauge how hard you're running? Right? Because we have these different intensity zones, right? Zone one, two, three, four, five typically. And uh, in my last video, I talked about what easy running means, uh, particularly in terms of what zone to stay in and what heart rates correspond to that zone and pace. What is an easy pace? What is a fast pace? In today's video, though, I want to pretend like we don't have any of those objective metrics to go by and we're just going to go by feel. So I want to describe to you how the different zones feel and how to know whether or not you're doing the right intensity at the right time. So if you think about it, humans, we are natural born runners. We, we are really born to run. We have it in us. It's just there are several aspects of our anatomy that is geared towards long distance running. We're not sprinters. We can sprint, but we're pretty slow compared to a lot of other animals. We're not born sprinters, but we are long distance runners. We can cover vast distances on foot uh, at, a, at a slow pace. But we, of course, we can train ourselves to run pretty fast too. Now, in training, um, it's very important to be in tune with your body. That's an essential sort of skill set that you have to develop as an athlete, knowing your body. And one of the benefits of knowing your body is that you can better gauge whether or not you're running easy enough on your easy days, right? If you're heading out on a recovery day, you don't want to run hard. You just want to accumulate some really easy time, get some blood flow to the muscles. But if you don't have a watch to go by, how would you know whether or not you're running easy? That's what I want to get into today. First of all, though, I want to say that if you are serious about your training, there's no need to shun technology. I would recommend getting a watch, uh, getting a heart rate monitor and actually tracking those metrics because it can be very useful. But today we're going by feel. All right. So first of all, the relevant zones are zone one, two, three, four and five. Okay, roughly speaking, zone one is that super easy recovery run type of zone where your heart rate is like below 70% of your max, something like that. Zone two is that bread and butter everyday zone where you're running on your long runs and on your easy runs is an easy zone, typically something like 70 to 80% of your max heart rate maybe, that's zone two. Zone three is that marathon pace type range in the middle. We're still aerobic, maybe between 80 to 85, 86, maybe up to even 90% of your max heart rate. It's below the lactate threshold. Then there's zone four, which is really where the lactate threshold comes somewhere in there. Uh, maybe lower zone four is just below threshold. Higher zone four is just above threshold. And that depends a little bit on your fitness, where your threshold is, but somewhere around that 84 to 89% of max heart rate type range. And last but not least, we have the zone five range, which is like all out or not all out. It's, it's hard running, uh, also known as VO2 max pace, right? It's you're running at your maximum aerobic capacity. After that, we're getting into like paces where heart rate doesn't really matter. Uh, things like sprints and stuff like that. And we're not going to talk about that today. So how do you know if you're in zone one? Let's start with that. Well, this is going to be subjective, right? Because I mean, I'm, I'm just going to be able to share my experience. But this is how I feel in zone one. When I'm in zone one, I feel like I am absolutely comfortable. Like there is there is no amount of discomfort. Like for an unfit person, this might be an easy walk, right? If when you go for an easy walk, I think most people can relate to this. An easy walk just feels refreshing relaxing easy you can think about all kinds of things you're not at all in any amount of pain or discomfort you're just smooth you know that's zone one when you're really barely breathing okay barely breathing you can you can notice that you are breathing more than when you're sitting still obviously but you're not working hard in any way shape or form it's super easy that's zone one okay and you got to be strict in the beginning Zone one might be a walk, like I talked about in my video about easier running. I'll put a link to the video here. Next up is zone two, which is also an easy zone. Both zone one and two is, is called easy. And in zone two, I'm definitely steadily running. It's not like my zone one run, which is really slow. It's a steady, you know, effort. 
but it's it's very sustainable and i would say that it's comfortable and at times uh, towards the upper end of the range perhaps it's just slightly uncomfortable slightly but it's conversational and I, i'm sure you heard that term before conversational pace talking pace that means that you're able to talk you're able to have a conversation with no issues you can say full sentences you're not gasping for breath in between words that sort of thing that's that's zone two so zone two is comfortable um i wouldn't call it relaxing like zone one is but it is comfortable you're fine in zone two now zone three that's when you're starting to work a little bit you've got to put in a little bit of effort to stay in zone three and of course a lot of beginners will actually head out on zone three runs almost on all runs okay which is not a good idea it's that zone where you know to a certain extent it is still conversational pace you can still hold a conversation but maybe you're struggling a little bit more than you did in zone two you know it's not in zone two if you're running with someone you want to have a conversation but in zone three it's probably a little bit more of an effort to maintain that conversation you're struggling a little bit but it is sustainable for a very long time marathon pace is typically within this zone somewhere so when you're when you're seeing even the elites running at marathon pace they're in in the upper ends of that zone three so you know they're not they're not breathing like crazy they're not it's not like an all-out effort it's a sustainable effort that you can keep up for hours but you are working harder if you if you sort of get what i mean it's sort of like an in-between zone you couldn't you would never call zone three easy okay it's not easy to run in zone three but it's not hard either it's sort of sustainable some people might refer to it as comfortably hard right all right zone four now this is an interesting zone because this is where the lactate threshold comes in and the lactate threshold also corresponds very closely with your ventilatory threshold and your ventilatory threshold is the point at which you will start breathing uh, more labored you'll notice that there's, there's a certain point where you're starting to you know like you're always breathing increasingly more and more the, the harder you run but at a certain point your breathing becomes labored like you know you have to actually you're pushing out and pulling in air like like a like a machine and that's usually around the ventilatory threshold which is corresponding with the lactate threshold I, i'm gonna get into what the lactate threshold is in another uh another video but basically this is the beginning of hard i would say somewhere in zone four you will find yourself um uncomfortable very uncomfortable i would say even at the upper end of zone four you're very uncomfortable but you can sustain it for a while right uh, you can technically run at lactate threshold for about an hour that's the physiological limit to how how much time you can spend around that lactate threshold intensity so whatever pace you feel like you could sustain for an hour in a race you know when you're really pushing it and when you're well tapered and rested beforehand that's your lactate threshold pace that's your uh, lactate threshold intensity so again in training uh, this is not conversational pace you're not having a conversation at when you're running at uh, in zone four you might you know throw out some words here and there uh, to communicate with your other uh, run uh, training partners but you're certainly not keeping conversation up uh, some people say this is where the conversation stops zone four okay so you're working hard uh, but it's sustainable uh, it's uncomfortable and you're breathing heavily zone four now last zone zone five this is <laughs> definitely not a conversational pace you are not gonna even really want to throw out almost any words in this zone this is at your vo2 max intensity which is close to your max heart rate even it's the type of pace that in a race in an all-out race you could probably keep it up for like eight to, to, to ten minutes maybe eight or ten minutes um but in a in a in a training session you would probably do intervals and you'd probably do them for like two to five minutes in an, in duration so whatever pace you feel like yeah five minutes that would be tough that's kind of that intensity 
uh, you're breathing like a train okay you're just like boom, boom, breathing like crazy um, um, you are working hard you're pushing you're not at all relaxed uh, it is very painful at times uh, it is very uncomfortable and you're just dying to get it over with sort of um, that's the VO2 max intensity type of effort. So there you have it. Zone one, relaxing. Zone two, comfortable. Zone three, uncomfortable. Zone four, hard but sustainable. Zone five, hard and unsustainable. Okay, that's your five training zones and how much time you should spend in each one of them. That's a topic for another video, but I'll refer back to that video I made last week about easy running. Now you have to get to know your body in order to learn this and you have to get to know what types of heart rate correspond with what types of pace and intensity and effort for you. And a great way to do that is to use a heart rate monitor and to, to get objective data while paying attention to how your body feels that will yield the best results. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can send me a message at the Lone Trail Facebook page and I'll be sure to reply. Please subscribe, of course, to this channel if you haven't done so already. Follow us on Facebook as well and stay tuned for more content. Thanks. Bye-bye.